Welcome to the old numbers. I'm your host, Jan Johansson. Thanks for tuning in to the old numbers, a program in which I share some of my most favorite topics with the rest of the world. Music, interviews, interesting guests, language-related stuff, history, and live performances. It all comes together here at my studio in lovely Wake County, North Carolina, USA. Kentucky. We're at the Executive Inn, and IBMA is in town. Present in this picture is Peter Rowan, Ira Gitlin, Mike Ramsey, Bill Harrell, and yours truly there with the fiddle. Butch Robbins was also there in the jam on the banjo, but unfortunately, he didn't make the picture. Our band, New Vintage, had had a long week at IBMA, and we were all pretty tired. And we were actually planning on driving back to Raleigh from Owensboro Saturday night. It's a long drive, about, well, it's over 10 hours. And if you go the uh, Interstate 64, you're going to go through some pretty serious mountains in Kentucky and into West Virginia, Virginia and into North Carolina. Before the long drive, I really wanted to join this jam, and it was a it was a great one. I was having a rather large time and in no hurry to leave. And at some point during the evening, it was decided that, that we were going to spend one more night at the hotel and return home on Sunday instead. And that was a really good idea. Rowan had a group of Japanese friends who were making sure he wasn't getting dried out by handing him small bottles of ozeki, the famous Japanese sake, between songs. With all the talent at the jam, it got really late, and I made it back to our room for some much-needed sleep at some point. I, I'm not sure what time, but after a couple of hours, I awoke with the I call them classic handbook signs or symptoms of a heart attack. I felt really sick to my stomach and, and started throwing up and my chest hurt and, and my arms were hurting real badly too. And I recall waking my roommate Russell Johnson up, telling him, uh, listen, you need to take me to the hospital. I'm having a heart attack. His short response came quickly. You're shitting me. No, I wasn't. So, Russell took me to the hospital and thereby saved my life. By the time we arrived at the emergency room, I was pretty much out of it. I recall two male nurses discussing how to hook up some device. Like, does this red thing hook up to the red or the white, whatchamacallit. Not exactly the most encouraging words a man on his way to pass out can hear. Had we stuck to the old game plan, we would have been in the middle of the mountains with no easy access to the hotel that Sunday morning. It would have been a rather bad day at the office. Turned out I had a 
major heart attack, which was a, a life-changing experience. And 17 years later, after a number of procedures, including bypass surgery, defibrillators, stents, heart pumps, etc., I finally received a new heart from a 24-year-old African-American musician at the uh, University of North Carolina Hospitals at Chapel Hill on March 19th, 2011. A truly life-saving event. I'm glad that we decided to stay one more night in Kentucky. Well, for me it became more like a week. My wife, Teresa, flew up to Owensboro uh, as soon as she got the word that I was sick. Well, it, actually, it, she flew into Evansville, Indiana. I don't think there was a, a flight to Owensboro any time that day. Um, at her layover in Nashville, somebody stole her purse with everything that was in it credit card, driver's license, all that stuff. So, truly not a good day. I heard later that Carlton Haney was leading a prayer circle on that Sunday on my behalf, which was quite moving. Two very fine gentlemen, Bill Evans and Dan Hayes, who were both at the time working for IBMA. They, both of them would come over to the hospital every day and check in on us. And as a matter of fact, Dan ended up driving us to the airport in Nashville for the flight to Raleigh when it was time for us to leave about a week later. Yeah, this is a pretty powerful image. It evokes a lot of emotions. 